This next section is naming and writing ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are composed of positive metals and negative non-metals. That's why they're stuck to each other or bonded to each other. There's several categories. One of them is a binary um, ionic compound, meaning two elements, and ternary, which means it has more than two and has a polyatomic ion in it. Then there's also ionic compounds that are composed of metals that have more um, a single charge, and then sometimes the metals have more than one charge to it, or multiple oxidation states. So those are the categories. The first one, MBN, that's the formula. And if we're trying to write the name, we look up, um, it asks some questions. Does the formula have a charge? All these compounds um, will be neutral. And so we're gonna be answering no to all these questions in this section because none of them have a charge to them or have the word ion. Um, and all of these in the ionic section will begin with a metal. So uh, the question is, is whether there's um, two or more elements in this. And the formula was NBN. And so there's MB is one element, one capital letter, and N is the other. So there's only two elements, um, or it's a binary ionic. And so we go to the next question which is, does the, the first element have multiple oxidation states? The first element is NB. So if we go to the periodic table and find NB on the periodic table, um, we're looking to see if it has multiple oxidation states. And if you look on your periodic table, NB can have plus three charge, or it can be plus five. That's more than one possible charge. So it, yes, it does have multiple oxidation states. And um, if we go back to the, the naming, if we since we answered yes, it does have multiple oxidation states, it puts us at this box right here for naming binary ionic compounds. It says to name the first element, NB, which is niobium with the Roman name, Roman numeral to indicate its charge. Okay, to figure out the charge on MB, since we don't know whether it's the plus three or the plus five, we first have to know what the charge is on nitrogen. Looking on the periodic table, we find nitrogen is on, over here on the right hand side and nitrogen can be its charge can be found by looking at the top of the periodic table. Nitrogen has a negative three charge. Knowing this, we can then go back and um, we can write the Roman numeral. So we go to naming it. And we know that um, nitrogen has a negative three charge. So this whole compound is neutral. With, when we have one niobium to one nitrogen, it's neutral. That means that the niobium must have a balancing charge to it, or a plus three. So when we write this, we're gonna write it as niobium, and then Roman numeral three to indicate its charge, and then we're gonna do the second part of this, which is name the second element, nitrogen, but we replace the last syllable with ide. Well, nitrogen's an exception we're gonna replace the last two syllables. And so the answer to this is niobium nitride. So niobium, and this is um, an ionic binary compound. The next one is rhenium Roman numeral four in nitride. So going back to um, the naming chart, we're gonna look at the formula side of this. This, what's the name again? This was rhenium Roman numeral four nitride. 
rhenium. So it does not end in ion. It's not a single word. So we're going to answer no to this. And it doesn't have mono, di, tri, tetra as a prefix. So we answer no. And the name um, does not end in the word acid. If you notice, we're going to be working with this section here, the ionic part. Um, and so we can almost skip to this and we look to see if it ends in eight or eight. So let's go back and look at that word again. And the last three letters of this are ide, I-D-E. So it does not end in eight or eight. So we answer no to this question. And that ends up putting us uh, asking, does the, the name have a Roman numeral? Yes, it does. So we're here, and we're going to use this box, use the Roman numeral as a charge. Well, it was a Roman numeral four, so we know that we have a, a plus four charge. And then we look up the element, rhenium. So rhenium, when we find it on the periodic table, rhenium has, where is it? right here is RE and so that's the symbol that we're going to use um, and then we're going to have a plus four charge to it and we're going to it says um, look up the charge of the second element so we've got RE and then we're going to look up the charge of the second element and from the last problem we remember that nitrogen was negative three so we have rhenium, which is Re, was a plus four charge. We know it's a plus four charge in this example because it tells us with the Roman numeral. Nitrogen has a negative three charge. Those charges don't balance, so we use the crossover method to put, we take the charge on the cation and put it down below on the anion. Notice I'm not writing the positive I'm just writing the number. And then we take the negative three and we write this number down here. When we rewrite this, we write it as RE with no charge, but there's three of them. And then there's four nitrogens, so N with a four down below. The reason why this works is because rhenium with a plus four charge, if we have three of them, we're going to have a total of plus 12 charge. Nitrogen, if we have four nitrogens, we're going to have a negative 12 charge. And the positive charges and the negative charges end up canceling each other out. So this makes a neutral compound, which is stable. The next example, INOH3, when we go to the naming flowchart, we are asking the question, um, does the, this one has three plus elements in it? So it's an ionic ternary. So we go right here. And then the first element, IN, indium, we need to look up to see if it has multiple oxidation states. So we find indium on the periodic table, which is IN um, and indium is right here. Since there's only one possible oxidation state, right here there's only one number, and that's plus three. Indium, we don't need to communicate its charge, so we don't need Roman numerals on indium. And we're gonna go indium has a plus three charge so i'm going to write that down it's in with a plus three now looking at the the naming we're right here which is um, the first element does not have multiple oxidation states so we're in this box here 
So we're going to name the first element, which is indium. Look up the polyatomic ion. So the polyatomic ion that we're going to look up is um, OH and write its name. So when we go to the back of the periodic table, we find um, OH and we look up its name. The name of OH is called hydroxide. And we're going to write this as indium. We don't need a Roman numeral because it has a single oxidation state. And then the polyatomic ion OH is called hydroxide. So this compound is called indium hydroxide. The next one, Li2O, when we go to the flowchart for naming, this one, this time, we're answering that it has two elements. And so we're going to be, um, we're going to be naming, let's see if two elements. And then we check to see if it has multiple oxidation states. So this was Li is what we're looking for the metal to see if it has multiple oxidation states. When we find it on the periodic table, lithium is right here. It only has one oxidation state, plus one. So we do not need to write, um, we're right in this box here, and it says name the first element, lithium and then name the second element, oxygen, and replace the last syllable with ide, so it's oxide. So the right answer for this is lithium oxide.